Today's the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Good morning. Good morning. It's a delight to have you here in the courtyard, and it's a delight to have you joining us at home. Uh, we hope that both here at or, or at home, you experience the reality of God's presence. For He is risen. And that's what we celebrate on a, a weekly basis, on a daily basis, that our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ rose from the grave and has gifted us and empowered us with his Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit, to encourage us and to continue to, to lead us and mold us and shape us into the people that God would have us be. So it is a delight that you're here. If you're joining us for the first time at home, we want to welcome you to, to Trinity and our worship service right here. Begin just with a, a few uh, announcements. One is, we say it each week, we want to stay connected, especially during this pandemic time. And one way that we stay connected is by sending in to us uh, trinitychurchcamarillo at gmail.com, just your email, so that we can uh, get communicate with you. So that, again, is trinitychurchcamarillo at gmail.com. We'd love to know that you're listening in or viewing uh, and of course, you on the, in the courtyard, thank you for, for being right here. You can also give online at trinitycamarillo.org. You can see that at our website. Uh, the offering basket is in the back, right next to the hand sanitizer as you, you walk in. Uh, and again, with that, I want to say thank you for continuing to wear your masks right here and social distancing. As I mentioned last week, things are spiking a little bit more. And so for us just to care for our neighbors, uh, I'd really appreciate that. Uh, you're invited to join us on, a, on Thursdays at 1 o'clock in the Reflection Garden. Uh, we mask up and we social distance, but we have a time of prayer. And it's a wonderful time just going to the Lord and, and lifting up uh, Trinity Church, those who are ill, uh, as well as seeking God's direction. And so please join us at, at 1 o'clock out on the patio on Thursday. Uh, also want to thank uh, the Spars for the, the flowers uh, this morning. Uh, they are, uh, let's see, they're, they're for Ruby, I think. It's her birthday. Uh, and so that is their uh, their granddaughter, and it's her 10th birthday, and so it's the celebration of her 10th birthday. So give the star spars a bad time and a good time, if you will. Uh, that'd be great. I uh, There's a number of things uh, I want you to be aware of toward the end of this month. That is the 29th, which is a Friday, the 30th, which is a Saturday, and the 31st, which is a Sunday, that is our eco-national gathering. Usually, uh, I have the opportunity to go and participate in this national gathering. But of course, this year, the way things are changing, we are going to have it online. And I actually like this because that way you can participate, you can view, you can see what is happening. So I want to extend an invitation to you to go to our website, uh, trinitycamarillo.org, and you can sign up for the conference. It's Friday the 29th, Saturday the 30th, and the 31st. On the 31st, which is a Sunday, the reason why I bring this up, they, uh, they close up the conference with a sermon. And the only way for us to drop this sermon in is to put it on the web. So on the last Sunday of this month, the 31st, we will be viewing at home. We will not have a, a, a service out here on the patio that's the 31st. A um, little more information, I'll get it out to you, but I thought I'd drop that to you right now. I like to begin with a question. Uh, this, this Sunday morning, it's more than one. Uh, it's a few questions, and, and here they are. How do we heal a divided country? How do we love your neighbor as yourself? Somebody already has the answer. They're calling in right now. I love that. <laughs> if you're at home, phone's ringing. It's all good. <laughs> but the bottom line is, is what role do we as followers of Jesus, what role do we play in this? What's our part? Looking forward to uh, addressing the, the second part of the great commandment, loving your neighbors this morning. Let us spend just a, a few moments in quiet as we prepare our hearts to worship the living Lord. Let us be still.
Amen. I'd invite you to join us now in the call to worship, which is found in your order of worship or on the screen at, at home. Let me begin. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, you his servants. Praise the name of the Lord. Let the name of the Lord be praised, both now and forevermore. From the rising of the sun to the place where it sets, the name of the Lord is to be praised. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the opportunity that you give to us this morning to gather as your people. We thank you for your presence, and we pray that you would continue to encourage us by your Spirit as we open up your word this morning and read. May your Holy Spirit touch our hearts and continue to shape us and draw us closer to you. Lord, thank you for this time. And now we pray the prayer that you taught your disciples to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. It is good to see you, Jonathan. I hear you are preaching today. So after he sings, he's off to Soli Church to preach, so keep him in your prayers. That'd be great. Hey, Trinity, let's sing together. Come down, fount of every blessing. Turn my heart to sing thy name. Streams of mercy never ceasing. Call for songs of loudest praise. And teach me some melodious sonnet sung by flaming tongues of love. Praise the mountain. Fixed upon it, down of thy redeeming love. And here I've raised my Ebenezer, rhythm by thy help I'm gone. And I hope by thy good pleasure, Safely to arrive at home. And Jesus saw me when a stranger wandering from the fold of God. He to rescue me from danger and opposed his precious No to grace, how great a debtor, daily I'm constrained to be. Let thy goodness, like a fetter, bind my wandering heart to thee. I'm prone to wander, Lord, I feel it, prone to Prone to wander, prone to wander, Lord, I feel it. Prone to leave the God I love. Is my heart, Lord, take and seal it, seal it for Thy courts above. Is my heart, Lord, take and seal it. Seal and for thy courts above. Here's my heart, Lord. Take and seal it. Seal and for thy courts above. Amen. Well, thank you, Jonathan, and may the Lord's peace go with you as you preach today. 
Uh, would you join me in the prayer of confession, which can be found in your bulletins or on the screen at home? Holy God, we confess that we do not always love our neighbor. We confess that we have despised others, even to the point of hatred. We confess that we have been hurt by others. We confess that forgiveness and reconciliation at times are just impossible for us. We know that nothing is impossible in you. We come to you seeking healing and wholeness for us. Help us, whenever possible, to live in peace with others, to seek reconciliation and healing and forgiveness. Our desire is to please you. Forgive us, we pray, in the name of Jesus, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Let's just take a moment now to confess our sins silently before the Lord. Heavenly Father, we thank you that you are a God of healing, that you have healed our sins through your Son, but also that you desire to heal us individually and as a nation. So Lord, uh, we just look to you for our healing. In Jesus' name, amen. So brothers and sisters in Christ, be assured your sins are forgiven. As it says in Ephesians 1, 7, in him, being Christ, we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sin, according to the riches of God's grace. So let us stand and rise and sing the Gloria Patri.
my Savior Jesus reigns above. He's watching me with eyes of love, and by his side a place is promised to me. My heart is full, my faith is strong. I lift my voice to him in song with nothing on my tongue but hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Carolyn. Thanks, Gary. I was greeting people as uh, folks were coming onto the patio, and uh, I loved Sue's comment. She said, we just blew in instead of flew in, blew in. And with the, the wind this morning, that's kind of how we, we feel. You might get hit by acorn or uh, a pine cone dropping from the trees, so just be, <laughs> be careful of that. And uh, just a few things as well before we uh, get to the message in Scripture. I would love for you to write down the name Kyle Danielson. Uh, many of you know Roxanne Danielson and Tim, and uh, their son Kyle has been in the hospital uh, with the, the COVID, and it's been very, very difficult to get his oxygen levels where they need to be. And so they have asked for prayers, and uh, it's pretty serious. So it, it is Kyle. Kyle Danielson, and also if you would uh, pray, I, I just saw Carrie, Carrie's in the, in the back on here in the courtyard, uh, struck off. His brother, his brother Kevin, that many of you know, that's been a part of uh, Trinity here, he's been in the hospital for the last two weeks as well uh, with COVID, and it's, uh, we need to be lifting up Kevin, so if you could write that down. Uh, Carrie lost his uh, I think his older brother or his brother, uh, Kyle, this year and this past year. And so Kevin's been sick. Uh, it's, it's just right close to our hearts. Uh, also, I wanted to ask the gentleman who, uh, and I, his last name I don't have, but it's David. Uh, he was the one who painted our sanctuary and painted our admin building, and uh, he passed away of a heart attack uh, recently. And so uh, just pray for his mom and family. His name is David. And so uh, I'd appreciate that. Something that was also drawn to my attention, which I love, I, I love, is uh, Delilah uh, Hartwich. She uh, wrote an article in the Acorn. She is uh, 11 years old. And they published it. And I don't know if you saw it or not, but it's uh, fantastic. I heard that. It's great. And so uh, just a part of the church here and uh, very thankful for her views and her thoughts as she put them out there. And uh, it's in the acorn. And uh, just as we approach tomorrow with Martin Luther King and uh, Day, is, uh, it was just kind of cool to see that article that's right there. Well, first of all, as I begin, I uh, haven't had an opportunity, but I want to say thank you to everybody who has uh, given Sherry and I over the holiday season gift cards, uh, uh, coffee cards, uh, cookies, love the cookies and uh, the cakes and the breads, uh, only gained seven pounds, so that's not bad, uh, you know, got to work that off, but we are so grateful. I was at the, the coffee, bean, and tea, uh, you know, off our kneel. And uh, I was using my gift card. And the manager, they have a great manager. Her name is Jen. She comes out from the back room and say, says, hi, Tom. And she's just so inviting and so welcoming. And I said, hi, Jen. How are you? Oh, I'm, I'm great. And we start talking a little bit. And it gets around to what I'm preaching on this week. And, and I told her that I was, I was preaching on love your neighbor as yourself. And she said, wouldn't that be nice? 
and I said, yes, it, it definitely would be. And uh, Jen, Jen and I might not uh, see things the same way in life. We might have a little different world view, but uh, just a wonderful person. And so I asked her, I said, Jen, why do you think this is such a divided country? And she thought about it for a minute, and then she said, well, Tom, I think we're divided because we care more about ourselves and what we believe than we do about others. We care more about being right than listening to what others really have to say. This morning, we had a couple questions. One was, how do we heal a divided country? How do you love your neighbor as yourself? And what role, what role do we play in this as it comes together? Last week, I, you might remember, I gave you a homework assignment. Uh, it's funny, I didn't get any turned in. So, uh, but the homework assignment was this. Figure out what pleases Jesus. Figure out what pleases Jesus and then do it. We looked at uh, the first part of the great commandment. Mark chapter 12, 28 to 31, when we talked about pleasing Jesus, we are to love God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind, and with all your strength. And we are to love your neighbor as yourself. This is what really matters. And sometimes these words, we, we've seen them or we've read them numerous times, but they just kind of bounce off when in the weeks ahead, I, I really would like for them to seek down into our hearts and for us to, to look at them in a new way, loving God and loving neighbor. Because I truly believe this is what pleases Jesus. Tomorrow we, we celebrate Martin Luther King Day, and many things come to my mind when I think of Martin Luther King Jr., but what really stands out to me is his famous I Have a Dream speech. It was delivered over to over 250,000 people on the, on the steps of the Lincoln Memorial in Washington, D.C. And in that speech, in that speech, he, he says a few things that I just would like to repeat. He says this, Even though we face the difficulties of today and tomorrow, I still have a dream. Do we still dream? Even though we face the difficulties of today and tomorrow, and we're in the midst of some difficulties, he says, I have a dream. And he goes on to that famous part where he says, I have a dream that my four little children will one day live in a nation where they will not be judged by the color of their skin, but by the content of their what? You've got it. By the content of their character. Character matters. It does. And then this is what I love, being a, a preacher, of course. This is the part I love of that speech, where he quotes scripture. He says, I have a dream that one day every valley shall be exalted, every hill and mountain shall be made low, the rough places will be made plain and the crooked places will be made straight and the glory of the Lord shall be revealed and all flesh will see it together. What a dream. Amen? Yeah. King references Isaiah 40 in this speech. Isaiah 40 speaks about God's messenger who cries out in desolate places cries out into our situation right here, prepare the way of the Lord. Every obstacle that blocks that needs to be taken away must be removed. Every valley shall be exalted, every mountain be made low, the crooked places made straight, rough places made smooth. Whatever is wrong with the road, if you will, must be corrected. And this is what I believe, friends. I believe that Jesus is the only one who can bring about 
this correction. I believe that from my whole heart. As we live in a country that I don't think I've ever seen as divided as it is right now. It is only Jesus who can bring about this correction. Preparing the way of the Lord in Isaiah 40. It's a word picture. This preparation must take place in our hearts. In our hearts. Our hearts need to be softened and transformed. Our hearts need Jesus. Amen? Yeah. But not only that, we need His love. His love. We say we love Jesus, but how is this love truly being lived out in our lives? We are followers of Jesus. We submit to him. He is our master. He is our Lord. He is our king. The scriptures actually give us a good definition of, of love. In 1 Corinthians, Paul writes these words, What is love? Love is patient. Love is kind. It does not envy. It does not boast. It is not proud. It does not dishonor others. How do we heal a divided nation? We are to love. It is not self-seeking. It is not easily angered. It keeps no records of wrong. Wow. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always preserves. Are we patient with our neighbors? Are we showing kindness to them? Do we love our neighbors or we just love those who agree with us? We can make a difference. God continues to transform my heart, to which I am so thankful. And I know that God can continue and will continue to transform our hearts and soften our hearts so that we can be kingdom people in love like this. You know, I always uh, I, I have that picture of of two people playing tug-of-war. You ever played tug-of-war? Using a rope, you know? You know, I'm gonna... We're tension right now. We're both just got that tension on the rope, and we're afraid to let go. What would happen if we let go? What would happen if we let go and let God? I truly believe God is sovereign. As I look at the scriptures and I see the miracles through scriptures, how in the heck are we going to get through that sea in front of us? Come on, Moses, how's that going to happen? It's amazing how God led them. Amen? I'm going to provide a land for you, and I'm going to direct you to the promised land. How's that going to happen? He does. We are called by Jesus to love. Love our neighbors. And many of you I, at home, I'm sure, as well as here in the courtyard, are very familiar with the passage out of Luke 10. It's the, the, the parable of the Good Samaritan where the, the religious person of the law comes to Jesus and basically says, how do I have life to its full? How do I inherit eternal life? And Jesus responds by saying, you know, love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength, and love your neighbor as yourself. And, and the, the teacher of the law says, well, then who is my neighbor? And that's when Jesus shares this parable. He talks about a man that goes down from Jerusalem to Jericho. And as that man was going down, he was, attra he was attacked by robbers and he was, he was stripped and he was left there on the ground half dead. But luckily, a priest comes by. 
And you would think right then, aha, the hearers of that story, a priest, okay, a religious leader is coming by. And he looks at the man there and he crosses by on the other side, doesn't even come near, doesn't want to be defiled, doesn't want to get his hands dirty. So he walks right on by. Well, the next person that comes by is a, a Levite. Another person of the Jewish faith and of the law. And you would think, ah, oh, this person would help. But no, that person also walks by on the other side. And then if you were a listener, if you were a hearer of the story, you would say, aha, finally, Jesus is going to talk about the common people, the ones that really need to hear, you know, and, and have a voice. But he doesn't. The person, he says, who comes next is someone who is despised by all. It's a Samaritan. A Samaritan comes by as he traveled, and it says that he took pity on the man. He went to him and bandaged his wounds, pouring on the oil and wine. Then he put the man on his own donkey, and he brought him to an inn and took care of him. The next day, he took out two denarii and gave them to the innkeeper, and he said, look after him. And when I return, I will reimburse you for any extra expense you may have had. And then Jesus, after telling this story, turns to the religious leader and says to him, which of these three do you think was the neighbor in the man, to the man who fell into the hands of the robbers? And the expert of the law replied, the one who had mercy on him. And then Jesus says, go and do likewise. Are we going? Are we doing likewise? Or are we holding on too tight, afraid to let go? Jesus is to be our example when it comes to loving our neighbors. And how did Jesus show his love for us? <laughs> he showed mercy in the way he acted, not only toward us, but to others Jesus came and died when I was to be the one to die. We are the one, but he took our sins upon himself. He showed mercy on us, but he also showed mercy on others throughout the scriptures. Remember the woman caught in adultery? It's in John 8. He showed mercy to her. He had compassion, it says, on, on the leper in Mark 1, and blind Bart, I call him, blind Bartimaeus, he had compassion on him and mercy on him. And then that time when over 5,000 people were listening to him, he had compassion on them, he had mercy on them and said, hey, don't send them away, let's feed them. How are we to love our neighbors? We're to show mercy. But then also, how did Jesus do this? He, he humbled himself and did not demand his own way. Wow. Let's think about that. In Philippians 2, words that need to sink down in God's word, it says, do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit. Rather, than, rather in humility, value others above yourself. It doesn't say value those who agree with you. Value others above yourselves, not looking to your own interests, but each of you to the interests of others. In your relationships with one another, have the same mindset as Christ Jesus, who being in very nature God, did not consider equality with God something to be used to his own advantage. Rather, he made himself nothing by taking the very nature of a servant being made in human likeness and being found in the appearance as a man, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to death, even death on a cross. He showed mercy. He humbled himself. But something else, he listened. He listened to others and he took time to understand their situation. Remember Nicodemus? He came at night. 
He wanted to have that conversation with Jesus. And Jesus listens. There was Zacchaeus, I preached on that a few weeks ago, who ran up ahead. He was a tax collector, and Jesus stopped right at the tree that he happened, Zacchaeus happened to be in, and he said, come on down, Zacchaeus. I want to go to your place. I care about you. I want to spend time with you. He took time to listen to people. I remember that woman who had a physical ailment for so many years. She kept bleeding, and so she came through. She said, if only touch him. And she touched Jesus and was healed. And Jesus stopped and took time to, to talk and converse with her. It's so important to listen and to understand. I've been, uh, uh, been reading a book. I, I read it a long, long time ago, but uh, it's fun to pull it out again. And uh, uh, Seven Habits of Highly Effective People, from Stephen Covey. Uh, blow it off, you know, pick it off the shelf, blow it, and look at some of those thoughts again. But in this story, in one of the chapters, it, it talks about just understanding other people and where they're coming from. And that's so important for us in this loving our neighbors. It, it talks about, there's an illustration about a, a, a man who is on a subway in New York City on a Sunday morning. It's a little quieter on Sunday mornings than during the rest of the week. And, and so in this one car that he happens to be in, you know, he was just sitting there. Other people that were in the car were reading their newspaper and just kind of to themselves. The doors open, and a man comes in, and he's got two children. The man sits down, and he kind of goes off into his own world while the two children start terrorizing everybody in the car. I mean, they would go up to somebody and, and knock their newspaper or go up and try to get their attention or knock on them. And, and the gentleman who was telling the story said, you know, it was really getting to me. Finally, I got enough nerve up to say, hey, sir, don't you think you ought to calm your children down here? Look what they're doing. The man who was the father of the two children kind of woke up from his daze, and he looked, and he said, yeah, you're right. Oh, I'm so sorry. Their mother just died, and we're coming back from the hospital. I don't know how to handle this, and I'm sure my, my kids are just acting out right now not knowing what to do. Just brought a whole different light to the situation. And that's what I truly believe we need to do is take the time to listen, to understand. This past week, we lost a, a member of our congregation, Ron Young, Carol's husband, a wonderful man, a good man. And it's very important that we take the time to listen, to be there for a family. We're called to be good neighbors. We're called to love our neighbors. Yeah. How do we heal a divided country? I think way of listening and trying to understand. Remember what it says in James 1, 19 to 20, where it says, my dear brothers and sisters, take note of this. Everyone should be quick to, quick to, there you go, quick to listen. Oh, you were dealing a second part, slow to speak, got it, okay. Quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to become angry because human anger does not produce the righteousness that God desires. Yeah. What's, what's the role here? What's the role that we need to play? I think all of us need, and I'll talk to myself right here, is I, I need to repent. We need to repent. We need to show mercy to others. I need to repent and, and humble myself and not demand my own ways. And I need to repent and take time to understand where others are coming from. Repentance is a decisive change in direction. I need to change that direction. It's a change of mind that leads to a, a change of thinking 
that leads to a change in the way you live. We are to love God and we are to love, love our neighbors. What is God saying to you this morning? As my favorite coffee barista says, Jen says, we need to care about people more than having our own way. Again, let me conclude with these words out of 1 John 4, 7 to 11. Dear friends, let us love one another, for love comes from God. This is how God showed his love among us. He sent his one and only son into the world that we might live through him. This is love. Not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son as an atoning sacrifice for our sins. Dear friends, since God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. Amen? Heavenly Father, we need your strength and power to love as you love. A servant's heart kind of love. A sacrificial love. A love that shows mercy. A love that is humble. A love that truly listens to and tries and seeks to understand where others are coming from. Not demanding our own way. Lord, thank you for loving us. And as we come to an understanding of that love, May we respond to that love by following and being obedient to your commands, loving you and loving our neighbor. Bring to us in our minds right now those that we need to love. Thank you, Lord. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. I yeah, invite you, if you would, to, to stand as we sing, or if you're at home, you can stand as well as we sing our, our closing hymn. Uh, we have a story to tell the nations.
Let me pray. Lord, I thank you again for your presence right here, the gift of your spirit. And I pray that your Holy Spirit would comfort Carol, young, and family. Watch over them. Thank you that you have provided a place for Ron to be with you for eternity. And so may your comfort and peace be with the family. And Lord, I also pray for the healing of, of Kevin, Carrie's brother. Watch over him. Be with him. Strengthen his body. And I pray the same for, for Kyle Danielson, that you would be with him and strengthen him and take this disease that so many people are affected from by and that you would heal them, Lord. And Lord, I thank you that you give us the opportunity to be your hands and feet, to show your love to those around us. They will know that we are followers of yours by our love. Thank you, Lord. And Lord, I thank you so much for uh, Delilah and just heard this article that she wrote. Bless her and continue to use all of us, to be your hands and feet, Lord. We pray this in Jesus' name. And everyone said, hallelujah, amen. May the peace of God be with you.